Hi, everybody. This is Corey. I'm the uh, host of the New World Witchery podcast. I'm also the author of New World Witchery, a trove of North American folk magic. Uh, those of you who know me know that I have a fondness for books. A lot of books uh, actually went into the making of this book. Uh, and I recently was watching... A couple of videos on YouTube, one from Thorn Mooney uh, and one from Hearthwitch, both of which were talking about kind of beginner introductory books for witches that don't suck, basically. Kind of what are your, your go-to uh, launchpad books for, for various aspects of witchcraft. Um, and both of those are really excellent videos. I uh, highly recommend that you go check those out. Um, but uh, one thing that I thought would be worth worth me doing, um, since my area of expertise, my sort of area of focus is folklore, um, I thought I would talk about, uh, if you're interested in folk magic, what are some kind of beginner books for somebody who's getting interested in folk magic that don't suck? Um, because witchcraft um, can encompass a lot of different things. I get into that in my book, and I promise that this is not just some sort of shameless self-promotion for my book. That would be really callous and shallow. Uh, at any rate, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of discussion kind of about witchcraft books that are really focused more on things like Wicca, right? Um, what are some good books uh, about, uh, you know, getting started with Wicca? What are some good books that are about getting started with kind of uh, traditional witchcraft? I've seen some folks talk about that as well. I believe Hearthwitch gets into that a little bit. Uh, as well as kind of getting into some of those sort of fairly um, common overlapping subject areas. that, And so they've done a really, really good job of kind of breaking those down. But I haven't seen a lot that really focuses on the folk magic side of things, and that's kind of where I step in. Um, so I wanted to just kind of run through a few of the books that I would recommend uh, if you're interested in folk magic um, that could be really good starting spots for you. All right, so what makes a book good for a beginner, uh, particularly when it comes to folk magic? Uh, one, it needs to be accessible. It needs to be something that's written in a style that's going to be understandable for kind of the average reader. Um, that doesn't necessarily bombard you with a ton of academic information, uh, but at the same time, uh, it also needs to be um, well-researched or at least well-sourced, so it needs to have a good sense of where it comes from. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to have tons and tons of academic citations. There are some books that I'm going to recommend that do not do that, um, but they do need to have a really good grounding either in um, information, in history, uh, or in the cultures about which they are speaking. Uh, and three, they need to have things that you can do. They need to have actual things that you can go out and try uh, without necessarily um, end endangering your immortal soul, right? Uh, or without necessarily um, getting you uh, sort of stymied by too much ritual uh, or making you feel like there's nothing that you're really doing. I don't want it to be all in your head either. So it needs to have a good mix of practical material, um, some historical or cultural grounding, and readability. So uh, into that, uh, I've kind of divided this into three different categories here. Um, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about very general folk magic books that I think uh, are good for you if you're just kind of dipping your toes into folk magic, broadly speaking, uh, and, you know, why are these some good choices? Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of specific uh, iterations of folk magic. One is going to be leaning more on the um, British, uh, you know, English side of folk magic, um, sort of leading you towards the European styles of folk magic without getting too, too specific. Uh, and then the other one is going to be uh, looking at, of course, North American folk magic, and these are going to be books that I recommend. So let's start with kind of the very general stuff. Uh, I'm going to start with something that's uh, incredibly accessible, incredibly easy to read, lots of practical things that you can do, uh, very well researched, very well historically grounded, um, and it's also enormous. Uh, that's Judica Elish's uh, Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells. Now, um, if you uh, have never seen this book before, it is, uh, it is, it, it is absolutely something you could build a house out of. It's so, so huge. Um, and it is, um, it's not selling you short when it says 5,000 spells. There's, there's actually slightly more than 5,000 spells in this, if I remember correctly from when we interviewed her. Um, this is great. It's broken into a lot of different categories. So you have spells that deal with everything from um, love magic, you know, dealing with healing as well, to more specific uh, kind of uh, focused practices. 
things uh, like animal-based magic, uh, magic that you do for animals or with animals in different ways. So it's a really, really interesting book, lots of effective material in it. Uh, it's, again, incredibly well-researched. Elish does uh, a phenomenal job of telling you not only what the spell is, but kind of the cultural context that it came from, um, in, as, in, in as much as she can. Each spell is kind of a little a chunk of a page. You can see there's just tons and tons of little spells uh, sort of on, on every page. Uh, but then she'll kind of give you these little uh, in italics annotations about some of these spells and tell you, you know, where is this coming from? What is the what is the sort of source of this? So it's really, really good. Um, why am I recommending it at a beginner level? Because it's really, really hard to go wrong with having that much material available. Um, if you bought just one book uh, for spell spells to try out, this would be a really good one because um, you can kind of pick and choose the spells that you want to experiment with. Um, and you get some information about where to go next from there and, and sort of do some more research. So there's really good stuff with Elisha's work that I think um, it gets a little overlooked. If you're not going to do this, she also has some other books uh, that might be more accessible in terms of the size um, and in terms of being able to digest it. So for example, she has uh, one which I think is called uh, Everyday Magic. Um, where she kind of goes through what sort of a daily magical practice might look like. And that's pretty good, too. So I definitely recommend that. Uh, so next up, I'm going to do a couple of what I kind of call classics of folk magic um, with some caveats. I'm going to actually throw some caveats under this. Um, I'm going to talk about Scott Cunningham's Earth Power and Earth, Air, Fire, and Water. Now, um, you can see from all the little stickers coming out of this, these are highly annotated because my uh, uh, podcasting partner and I actually did a book club on these last year. Where we sort of went through them uh, and broke down some of the spells that we were seeing, some of the, the information in here, and thought about, you know, well, how does this fit in for us? This, this is very much kind of the stuff that we started out with uh, back in the 1990s, um, were these kind of, kind of collections of folk magical spells. Now, that uh, they are good collections of spells. There are very easy, uh, accessible spells in here. They are rooted in folk magic. Um, the place where I would say Cunningham falls down is citation. He does have bibliographies uh, that you can turn to in here if you really want to do some digging. The spells themselves are pretty much never indexed. You never really know where they're coming from. Um, that's problematic uh, because there are things in here that very much come from cultures um, that uh, have had their had their magical material sort of cherry picked by authors. Um, sometimes sometimes authors like Cunningham to to make this uh, to make these kinds of books. Now, uh, again, I'm not saying that these are terrible books. I'm not saying um, that you you should never buy them either. Um, I'm actually recommending them, but I'm recommending them with this really big grain of salt and an understanding that Cunningham was writing these. I think he was writing the, these in the mid '80s. Uh, he also kind of framed these as the sorts of spells that you can only kind of do positive magic with them. You're not going to find very much in terms of cursing in here um, because he was reacting against things like the satanic panic. And because of that, um, a lot of the material in here is, is kind of leaning towards a sort of wicked interpretation of folk magic. But it is still folk magic. It is still a good jumping off point. Um, I would say, whereas uh, with Elish, I said you could kind of start there uh, and you'd have a whole lot to work with and it would kind of carry you forward. Um, these are less uh, less going to do that than they're just going to give you something that you can try out a little bit and see if you actually like folk magic at all, if it's something that you enjoy doing. If it is, um, then you know to kind of uh, go beyond his books as well. So next up, I'm going to recommend Spiritual Cleansing by Darayamika Haditz. Uh, I have no idea if I'm actually pronouncing that name correctly. Um, it's a very kind of reclusive author. They also wrote a book called Century of Spells. They've written a number of other books uh, as well. This uh, this book, though, is pretty pretty essential uh, when it comes to folk magic. Um, this is no frills, no nonsense, very, very practical spell work uh, rooted in a number of traditions. Uh, you, if you dig through this, uh, you can kind of see links to uh, Eastern European folklore, to, to some sort of Northern and Northwestern European folklore. Um, there's definitely a lot of uh, sort of immigrant communities in the United States um, that influence the, the magic you find in this, this book. Um, this material is really, really easy to do. It's really easy to understand um, things like doing various kinds of baths uh, that you can use for various magical effects. So uh, a couple of different love baths, including, including one that's made out of parsley and honey. Most people have that accessible to them. You don't have a lot of crazy ingredients, exotic ingredients. Um, has spells in here for uh, doing things like creating an, a warm and pleasant atmosphere in the home where you burn things like, uh, I believe it's allspice, cinnamon, and cloves. Um, very, very practical stuff. Also really good because 
Um, learning cleansing and protection early on in folk magic is very valuable. Um, it kind of sets you up to do a lot of the other work that you might wind up doing in folk magic. All right, next up, I'm going to talk about Brianna Saucy's Making Magic. Now, this um, this is not explicitly folk magic alone, but her work is very, very heavily influenced by folk magic. Uh, the thing I like about this is that it kind of takes you through uh, working with magic uh, in a way that lets you kind of create a working diary of magic. Uh, you can almost kind of follow the exercises that she gives you in here um, and, and essentially um, create a working practice of magic for yourself. Uh, she views this as what she would call sacred artistry. Uh, she's uh, very knowledgeable about kind of the, the work that she's doing. Um, but what I kind of love about this is that she's folding in a good bit of folk magic into um, other kind of daily practices. Uh, so you'll wind up setting up something by the door um, that creates a space for sort of uh, crossing a threshold between home and outside and therefore gives you a space where you can sort of do some protection or you might even do some sort of ancestor work there as well. But at the same time, it also allows you to kind of have a mental space where you break from when you come home from work and things like that. So it's a really interesting uh, approach to that. Uh, I actually think she's, she's done a pretty remarkable job of pulling together a couple of different threads. She also incorporates folklore like fairy tales uh, into uh, some of the work that she's doing. Goldilocks and the Three Bears uh, wind up being kind of influential in the, in the work that she's doing in this book. So you're, you're pulling from folklore in some really interesting ways. Uh, to, to get the content of this book. So it can be very, very useful for that. Kind of on a similar vein, uh, I've got this book, which is called Light Magic for Dark Times by Lisa Marie Basile. Um, she, uh, she comes at this from a, a very interesting perspective um, where she's not necessarily a believer. Like she's not necessarily coming at this from any kind of uh, theological or spiritualistic um, perspective. That doesn't mean that she's dismissive of the sort of spiritual sides of these things, but that's just not her focus. So her rituals are very much practical rituals. They're built on the backs of a lot of folk magic, but they also update things into sort of contemporary frames. So because of that, uh, you wind up with spells uh, that are designed to uh, incorporate very, very simple things. So, for example, this one is a spell to end loneliness and conjure a new friendship. Um, a lot of us, you know, coming out of, you know, pandemic era stuff, uh, we may be looking to make some new connections in our lives, some new social era uh, connections. Um, and this, I mean, it literally involves a white candle, a pen, a small piece of paper, and an envelope. Um, so very straightforward kind of working, um, which uses that same kind of structure that you find in folk magic, where the elements are very, very simple. But she doesn't go so far as to say it's all in your head either, right? Like this working is something that you're actually going to physically do um, and take those physical steps to make magic happen in your life. And because of that, I think that it's um, a really interesting contemporary folk magical book. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm including it as an intro and as a beginner book. Um, I would say if this is your very, very first taste of folk magic ever, you probably want to pair it with something like Drea Mikaharitz's Spiritual Cleansing um, or Brianna Saucy's Making Magic, uh, just because that'll give you a little bit more of sort of um, the, the grounded historical versions of folk magic that you can sort of see in comparison. But it is, it is a good place to start and it does give you some good stuff to work with as well. And finally, kind of in the general category, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Aidan Walker's Six Ways. Uh, again, you can see, very, very heavily <laughs> annotated. Um, I love this book. It's so good. There, there are a lot of really interesting things in this. They're all very short, digestible chapters. Um, everything uh, is essentially built on his personal systems uh, of, of magical practice. He's um, got some roots in chaos magic. He's got some roots in folk magic. Um, he's got some roots in a, a couple of other places as well. Um, this one does very much lean on that folk magical side of things, and you wind up doing a lot of really interesting work that what he calls kind of dirt sorcery, uh, where you're going to get uh, kind of out there in the grit uh, and do some, some work that uh, requires you to, you know, make specific things or uh, to, to go and actually spend some time uh, maybe with their people uh, or with animals uh, or with land, uh, with plants. And in doing that, you're going to start to sort of gain some access to folk magic. Uh, and if, especially if you're going into something, um, you know, at some point, if people are interested, I'd be happy to go into something that's a little more advanced on witchcraft and folk magic uh, books that I think are good kind of as your 201 level. This one pairs really, really nicely with another one he's got uh, called Weaving Fate. And then uh, there's another book uh, by uh, Chris Rappello and Tara Love McGuire called uh, Beesom Stang and Sword, uh, that uh, 
pairs really, really nicely with this one too. So it can kind of lead you in a couple of different directions, which I think is really, really neat. Okay, next up, I want to talk a little bit about the sort of uh, British side of things. And here, I'm only going to recommend a couple of things. Um, and they're things, uh, I'm going to recommend these because they're, they're things that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about. Uh, but I think they're actually really good books if you can get a hold of them. Now, that being said, uh, this first one is pretty hard to get a hold of. Um, and that is the Encyclopedia of White Magic by Patty Slade. Um, sometimes you can find uh, their book, um, Diary of a Village Witch, uh, which has almost all the same information. Uh, you can find that a little more easily. Um, so why am I recommending this if it's so hard to get a hold of? Um, it is incredibly accessible in terms of when you sit down to read it. It's very easy to understand. This is a book that very much started me on my folk magical path uh, in some ways. If, you've, if you're a fan of the show, you've heard me tell the story about finding this book in a bookshop uh, when I was like 11 or 12 years old, kind of begging to be able to get it. Um, and it's really neat because um, it does essentially follow the sort of uh, wheel of the year in, uh, I'm going to say Wicca, but I'm also thinking sort of British traditional craft. It, it sort of weaves both sides together. But what's really kind of cool about it is that it's also weaving in a ton of folklore along the way. Um, so the folklore materials are actually as dominant in this as any kind of like uh, sabbatical rituals, right? Um, so these are, uh, this is very, very good in kind of that space. I'm also just including it because it was my jumping off point. So um, people, I think, uh, you know, might be might be beneficial to somebody who wants to like look at that and kind of see um, where that springboards you into. Okay, so the other two kind of in that same vein, um, I'm going to highly recommend Peter Padden's uh, A Grimoire for Modern Cunning Folk. Um, I'm, uh, this doesn't have the cover on it anymore. I got a, it was, the version I got was kind of a special edition, uh, of this. So it's a hardcover edition. Uh, the versions you can buy online, uh, are paperbacks, but they have pretty much all the same material and information in them. Um, I'm including this one here, not because it's necessarily tons and tons of great folk magic, um, but because it is really, really good at kind of getting you into the sort of folk mentality of traditional witchcraft. He does build on ideas of cunning folk practice, which is a traditional sort of uh, folk magical practice found in England uh, and the UK more generally. If, if, you're th if you think that you're interested in folk magic and following that into kind of a traditional witchcraft practice, this is really good because it's a, it's a really, really easy to understand uh, book that does give you a lot of historical information too. Uh, and I I say all of that um, with the sort of caveat that uh, once you've read this, you're probably going to be able to dive into much more complex uh, other texts as well. So, uh, for example, uh, Jim, I think it's Jim Baker's um, Cunning Man's Handbook, uh, which is much more complex, much more detailed, really, really good. I wouldn't even call it 201. You're talking about kind of the grad school seminar of cunning folk practices. This gives you a little bit of grounding before you try to dive into something like that. And then this one is one I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody talk about this book, and I don't know why. Um, this is uh, called Witches All, and it's actually a kind of a compendium uh, of articles from, well, something called the Witches Almanac, uh, which is still put out every year. Right now it's being run by someone named Theodic, um, and it's a wonderful publication. It's a fantastic, like, annual publication of information uh, on witchcraft generally. Lots of folk practices get included in it, as well as things like astrological tables. Uh, you find things like moon signs. And Well, what Witches All is, is back when Witches Almanac was run by a woman named Elizabeth Pepper, um, uh, this was uh, her collection of a ton of the different articles and essays um, having to do with various aspects of witchcraft that they pulled from the pages of the Witch's Almanac. These are all kind of reprints and republications of those articles. Um, but what's really, really fascinating about all this um, is that there are just tons and tons of folk magical pieces in here. So you get um, charms and incantations that are pulled directly from uh, folk magic uh, and sort of collected here. And it winds up being a really, really good kind of collection um, of folk magic. Uh, it's also got really fun little art in there and things like that. It's very, very digestible, very easy to understand. Um, it does have some correspondence tables, but it kind of explains them pretty well. Um, it goes through tons of kind of background lore as well, which is just wonderful. Um, so again, and you know, it's not uh, a huge book, but it's just a really, really nice book to kind of crack open, um, read at your own pace. You can jump around in it really, really easily, and you absorb a lot of really good information. I actually think um, if you wanted to start 
kind of doing various folk magical practices that were sort of generalized uh, or uh, that sort of gave you a, a broad folk magical background. Um, this book, Judica Elish and uh, Dreymika Haritz's book, together would probably be um, the, the, the way to jump off um, and, and be able to have tons and tons of spells as well as being able to understand how they work and be able to do kind of the basic stuff that you need to do. Okay, so now we turn to kind of uh, my central area of expertise, which is folk magic in North America. Um, and one of the kind of amazing things is that we are in uh, a renaissance of publication on this. We have so many people uh, publishing on folk magic in North America right now. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of the more contemporary ones, uh, of course, because there's some really, really excellent ones in there. Um, but I'm going to start off with one that this one may be a little controversial, um, but it goes back a ways. This is from the 1980s. Um, it's a book called Jambalaya by uh, Louisa Teich. Uh, Teich or Teich? I can never, I'd, I'd never heard anybody say it out loud, so I don't, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, and you can see I, you know, picked this up uh, used um, uh, years and years and years ago. It's very much focused on um, African-American uh, folk magical practices. So when I say that I'm recommending this, I'm not necessarily saying that I recommend this for everybody to go out and immediately do everything in this book. Um, but in terms of understanding uh, and getting a grounding in some aspects of African-American traditional magical practices, this is a really good starting point, right? Um, this gives you um, some interesting rituals that you can do. It's it's written from a perspective of an African-American woman in the 1980s, which is informed by a lot of things that are kind of going on in culture around her at the time. Um, but at the same time, it's also very, very much sort of uh, reclaiming that sort of African identity in there too, uh, while making this something that anybody could pick up um, and still work with, even if they're not necessarily going to go towards working with an ATR, an African traditional religion. Um, so uh, in, that, in that capacity, this is a really good one if you think that you might be interested in pursuing um, some of the more sort of African-American um, traditions and practices, if that's kind of your cultural background or your cultural uh, surrounding and landscape. Um, this is a really good book to start with. It might lead you into things like Lil Dorsey's works as well. Um, and, and you can get a lot deeper with that uh, once you're kind of beyond that. But I wanted to introduce that one just because it's one that um, has been with me for a long time. I'm really, really fond of. Uh, I think it's a really interesting way to kind of get into that folk magic stuff. Uh, I'm going to start by saying uh, I, I highly recommend Jake Richards' uh, Backwards Witchcraft. Um, his uh, work is very accessible, most especially because he takes almost the first third of the book to just tell you the stories he grew up with. So a lot of folk magical books, the one of the traps that you can get into is um, you're going to jump in and be sort of inundated with spells, right? You're going to be inundated uh, with, you know, here's this particular object that you can make. Uh, here's how to make um, a hand or a mojo bag if you're doing African-American work, right? Uh, or a packet spell if you're doing Southern Conjure. But he wants you to understand that uh, there's this whole complex of stories that you probably need to at least have heard a little bit about uh, or spent some time with if you're going to be able uh, to understand the magic too. Uh, what are the folk tales that you grew up with, right? What are some of the customs and traditions that surround things like birth uh, or, or marriage? Um, because all that stuff has to kind of be in your head um, or the magic itself um, is just sort of words on a page and rote actions that you're doing. So this gives you some of the sort of fuel behind that. And I really appreciate what he does with that. I think it's a really good thing to do. Again, it's also really good for a beginner. Um, so if you have some roots tied to Appalachian culture, Appalachia is a really big region. So there's a lot of people that do have some connections to that. Um, if that's something that's kind of interesting to you, good place to start. Kind of on a parallel vein, um, I also... Uh, I also uh, say, you know, check out Byron uh, Ballard. Uh, Byron writes, uh, she's written a couple of different books. I'm throwing Staubs and Ditchwater um, up as sort of my recommendation. Um, and this one, you know, there's some you, you, there's some things that I think people will, will um, ding this one for. For example, she calls this um, Hill Folks Hoodoo. Um, and it's not the word I would use to describe what people do in Appalachia unless they're African-American. But I'm, again, you know, this is something that um, there's a whole lot that you can get into uh, with sort of the language of that. Um, if, if that's the thing that you're focused on, um, then, uh, then you're going to miss some of the good material that is actually in here. Uh, and she does really break down some, some great kind of um, um, mountain-based folk magical information. She gets into things like um, an using animal greases and, and folk magic, right? Um, that's totally uh, a legitimate and valid part of a lot of different mountain-based folk magical systems. 
Um, so understanding, uh, you know, uh, water, so stump water or, or ditch water um, have their magical uses within um, the folk magical traditions of the mountains there. Um, so because of that, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely something to check check out and kind of uh, to kind of get into. Uh, a couple of others that I do recommend, uh, Southern Cunning. Uh, this is all about folk magic in the American South. Uh, Aaron Oberon uh, largely is talking about kind of the southeastern United States here, but some of this folk magic even goes up uh, a little bit further, kind of almost to the mid-Atlantic coast uh, at times. There are places um, where what he's writing about is informed by that magic. Uh, and a lot of it's really informed by kind of the, the deep south and the swamp bayou magic as well. Um, it's it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. He's really revisiting a lot of material in one of my favorite folklore collections, which if anybody's interested, I'm happy to do uh, a video that's all about kind of great places to start researching folklore to, to find American folklore and folk tales. Um, but he's kind of building it off the back of one called The Silver Bullet, which is a really, really good uh, collection of witch tales from the broad United States area. Um, but it focuses mostly on the American South. Uh, and so uh, this one is really, really good because it does give you a lot of really, really basic grounding. Um, he you know, starts you off kind of thinking about the idea of omens and signs and sort of getting used to sort of seeing the world as trying to communicate magical information to you, uh, then kind of walks you through things like protection. Uh, so it's a very sequential kind of thing. He's going to teach you how to protect before he teaches you anything about cursing, which I think is a smart thing to do. Um, very, very rooted. Um, and uh, you can see where he's getting his information from. So there's a lot of good kind of sourcing in that too. Kind of along that same uh, vein, but uh, in, a, in a sort of different direction, um, is this one which has just come out recently, American Brujeria by J. Allen Cross. Um, I highly recommend this one. Um, this one is, uh, it's very much focused on Brujeria, but the Brujeria that has sort of evolved within the North American context, uh, particularly the United States context, right? Which is to say, it does not, it's not the same Brujeria you would find if you were, you know, in the streets of Oaxaca, right? Um, if you were in the streets of uh, the federal district uh, down in Mexico, right, you're not going to see what they're doing there uh, and say that looks the same as what's in this book. This book is very much about the adaptations of those sorts of folk magics within the United States where adaptations have had to be made. Um, but with that being said, he he is totally transparent and honest about that. He says that very much up front. Um, he also talks a lot about sort of the Catholic influences on this folk magic as well. Um, so this is not something where... Um, he's trying to sort of uh, wick or wash the history. Um, he, he does walk you through a lot of the information and material very, very uh, clearly and um, and pleasantly, too. That's the other thing. This time is really, really, it's no nonsense, but it's also very inviting and more very friendly. Uh, and the final book I'm going to recommend is kind of an intro book to uh, folk magic in North America. Uh, if you're trying to get kind of started with that, is this one, which is the uh, Folkloric American Witchcraft and the Multicultural Experience. It's a long title. Um, but it's a really concise, interesting book by Via Hedera. Um, those of you who know me know that I recommend this book all over the place. This is a really, really good starting place for North American folk magic. Um, Hedera has done a marvelous job of, one, explaining what the different sort of regional variations of folk magic are, then talking about how they cross over, how they connect, how different ethnic groups um, both have their individual traditions and also have traditions that that intersect in some really fun ways. <clears throat> Beyond that, she also gives you some really good practical workings and she tells you where her sources are from. She's great about doing that. Um, it's not uh, academic, but it's, it gets close. It gets really, really close to being academically sourced um, uh, without necessarily becoming overly academic in tone, which is really, really nice. So she's uh, a really talented writer. I can't wait to see what else she does. Uh, you'll find all kinds of things you're not gonna find uh, in pretty much any other book um, because, uh, because she's done such a good job kind of digging into this. Uh, so yeah, so those are my recommendations uh, for books, uh, you know, and again, I mean, I could, I could shamelessly self-promote this one as well as a really good guide to North American folk magic. <laughs> Um, and, and I do think that it is, I do think uh, this, you know, my book is a, is a good guide for that, but I don't think it's a perfect guide. And I think there's a lot that I miss in it. I think there's a lot that could be improved. Um, and I think that there are a lot of other books out there that can give you um, either different or better uh, or more suited to you jumping off points. And I'm hoping that this video helps you see what some of those are and how, uh, how you too can uh, dive into folk magic um, and find something that really works for you in terms of a folk magical practice uh, built on good source materials uh, and doing, doing the work as well, which I think is important. Uh, that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it for right now. 
if you uh, if you enjoy this video, if you like this video, um, please you know share it around, let people know about it. But then also uh, let me know if you want me to do more videos like this, where I can kind of dive into sort of more advanced level folk magic books and kind of lead you towards uh, what those might look like. There are quite a few of them out there that I would be more than happy to, to lead you to. Um, or if you were interested in uh, folklore books, just kind of uh, understanding folklore more generally um, and looking at sources for folklore in North America particularly. I'm very happy to do a video on that. I'm happy to do both if you're interested in that. Um, lots, lots of other stuff I'm happy to do as well. Um, but uh, I'd like to know, you know, what would you like to see next? So let me know and I'll see you next time.